Good morning, this is Cecil and Blues. Thank you for joining me for this Final Fantasy XIV video. We are three weeks away from the release of Stormblood. In previous videos, I've mentioned that you must have completed the main scenario for Heavensward in order to access the new Stormblood content when early access begins on June 16th. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you've done that by now, so today we're going to talk about Heavensward side stories. But, just to be on the safe side, I will say it again. You must complete the main scenario quest, The Far Edge of Fate, in order to travel to the new expansion areas. You'll need a minimum item level of 130 to access the final story dungeon in Heavensward. You can purchase gear from the market board, farm up tombstones of lore and use them to purchase items from his mana in Idleshire, she's the one in the middle, get drops from the Alliance raid The Weeping City of Mahak, or farm front lines for wolf marks and use them to purchase items from the disreputable priest found on the Wolves' Den Pier. You can use any combination of these methods that works best for you. If you still have main scenario quests left to finish, then that should be your priority. So, if a main scenario quest is a prerequisite for one of these side stories, I'm not even going to mention it. There has been a ton of new content and features added to Final Fantasy XIV since the initial release of Heaven's Ward. Not all of it is story-rich, and I'd like to use this video to point you in the direction of the more narratively focused side quests. But before I get rolling, let's take a moment to rattle off some of the more mechanical features that were added since the release of 3.0. Several new PvP modes were added over the course of Heaven's Ward, including Seas, Shatter, and The Feast. Stormblood is going to feature a major overhaul for PvP. I'm uncertain what impact that's going to have on the current maps. Some of them may be retired or adjusted to fit into the new design. Lord of Verminion is a battling game that uses your collected mini-pets. You can find the battle hall in the Gold Saucer up near the Chocobo Square. It's a simplified RTS game, and I don't really have a lot of interest in it personally. There are tutorials built right into the machines if you'd like to learn how to play. The Hall of the Novice is located just north of Aleport. Here you can register for novice training exercises for each of the battle classes, or you can sign up to be a mentor. There are some associated rewards with mentoring, but I've never looked too closely into it. The quest A Striking Opportunity is available in Idleshire to level 60 characters, which will unlock Stone, Sky, and Sea, a DPS training dummy tailored to judge your output against content you've unlocked. After completing this quest, you can access Stone, Sky, and Sea by speaking to the goodly adventurer just outside Idleshire's epilogue gate in the eastern hinterlands. The Aquapolis is a special mini-dungeon that is accessed by opening treasure coffers found with the dragon skin treasure maps. There is roughly a 50% chance for a portal to spawn. Inside, your party will face random encounters, then choose between two doors. If you pick the correct door, you progress to the next random encounter, otherwise you're booted out of the dungeon. There are more valuable rewards deeper in, should your luck hold out. Grand Company Adventurer Squadrons were added in Patch 3.4. You can visit your Grand Company's headquarters to look for a starting quest. You must be level 47 or higher, and have previously completed the level 15 quest, Rising to the Challenge, added way back in like 2.2. That unlocks the challenge log. You will need to build up a squadron in order to unlock the first lieutenant promotion for your grand company. I forget how many days exactly this took start to finish, three weeks may not quite cut it. Wondrous Tales was another feature added in patch 3.4. You can visit Chloe Aliapo in Idleshire to get a book with 16 random duties. Completing a task earns you a random sticker. If you collect 9 stickers over the course of 2 weeks, Chloe will give you a reward. If you can manage to get 1, 2, or 3 lines with those 9 stickers, you will get additional, better rewards. Custom deliveries were added in patch 3.55. This system can be used by crafters and gatherers as an alternate way of earning scripts. You must have completed the quest Go West Craftsman, and then Gamora in Idleshire will introduce you to Zloe Aliapo. 
This is a reputation system and it takes several weeks to progress, so you may not be able to finish this one off before Stormblood releases. The Diadem was reintroduced in patch 3.55 and it is accessible through a free company's workshop or the airship dock in Ishgard. They improved the system significantly from its original design, but I'm still not a fan. We shouldn't leave out the five side dungeons added over the course of Heaven's Ward. You'll need to pick up these quests in order to add the dungeons to your duty finder. To unlock Never Reap, get the quest Reap What You Sow from Sanu Vanu at OK Zundu in the Sea of Clouds. To unlock Pharaoh Sirius Hard, look for the quest Things Are Getting Serious from Tranchret at the Maelstrom Command in Limsa Laminsa's Upper Decks. You will have had to complete the level 50 quests, Serious Business, and Why So Serious. Travel to Aleport in Western Lanesca and look for the NPC Diamanda if you have not unlocked the level 50 version of this dungeon. To unlock the lost city of Amderpur Hard, you will need to visit E. Sumi Yan at the Conjurer's Guild in Old Gridania to pick up the quest One More Night in Amderpur. If you have not previously completed the level 50 quest, One Night in Amderpur, she will offer you that quest first. To unlock Hullbreaker Isle Hard, visit Limsala Minsa's upper decks and speak with Desden near the Drowning Wench. He will offer you the quest Storming the Hull. You will need to have completed the level 50 quest King of the Hull previously. If you have not, visit Mordona and locate Blozong in the 7th Heaven Bar. To unlock the Great Google Library Hard, pick up the quest Let Me Google That For You from Midnight Dew in Idleshire, and you can unlock Psalm All Hard by completing the quest The Fires of Psalm All offered by the Gossamer Moogle in Idleshire. A special deep dungeon, the Palace of the Dead, was introduced in patch 3.35 and expanded considerably in patch 3.45. To unlock the Palace of the Dead, look for Nojiro Marojiro in New Gridania and pick up the quest The House That Death Built. You can enter the Palace of the Dead by speaking to the Wood Whaler Expeditionary Captain in Quarry Mill. Its story is connected to the events of the level 50 Tom Terra Deepcroft Hard Dungeon. This is a hugely popular feature for leveling, leveling secondary jobs, but I'll go into more detail about the Palace of the Dead next week. Every one of these systems adds to Final Fantasy XIV and builds the world in a meaningful way, but let's turn our attention to the more story-rich side quests. The Alexander Raid series is a three-chapter story centered around the Illuminati goblins and the massive primal they appear to have summoned in the Dravanian hinterlands. The goblin Slow Fix in Idleshire has the first quest in this series, Disarmed. All remaining quests can be found in the Hinterlands from various NPCs related to the story. To progress this story, you will need to queue up for and defeat each boss in the Alexander Normal Mode raid. There are no strong incentives for players to participate in this old content currently, so queue times may be a bit rough. You can use it as an opportunity to watch a boss guide. Even though inflated item level will make most of these encounters a breeze, there are still some mechanics that can cause a wipe if not handled correctly. The final quest series rewards orchestration roles that cover Alexander's amazing soundtrack. Once you've cleared the normal version of each wing, you can visit the Wandering Minstrel in Mordona if you'd like to unlock the more challenging, savage versions of the raid. Heavensward's Alliance Raid series is known as the Shadow of Mahak. The first quest in this series is found near Ishgard's airship landing in the Pillars. You are looking for the quest Sky Pirates offered by an NPC named Unquiet Trader. The remaining quests in this series start in the northwest of the Sea of Clouds map on an island labeled Cold Wind. In order to progress this story, you will need to queue up for and defeat the three Alliance raids in turn, starting with the Void Ark, then the Weeping City of Mahak, and finally Dunsaith. Dunsaith has a slightly higher item level requirement than the final main scenario dungeon, at 235, so you may need a couple of more upgrades if you were just barely scraping by at 230. 
There are plenty of incentives for players to rerun all three of these raids, so queue time should not be a problem. There are a few mechanically complex fights, so I recommend watching a guide before entering the queue out of respect for your fellow players. The final quest series for this raid reward two orchestrian rolls and a cosmetic neck scarf. Four of this expansion's trials are unlocked through the main scenario, but the remaining three are connected to the Warring Triad side story that begins with the quest Gods of Eld, offered by an NPC named Torisfurs, who is located outside Fortem's Manor in the Pillars. This quest will introduce you to Uncle High, who will offer all remaining quests in the series. He can always be found in the Solar of the Rising Stones in Mordona. This quest series centers around the Empire's actions in Azisla and our buddy Regula von Hydrus, who we last saw in the Aether Chemical Research Facility. Once you have cleared the story mode of these encounters, you will gain access to the Extreme Difficulty mode. Uncle High will also provide quests to unlock the Extreme Mode encounters for Bismarck and Ravana. If you'd like to unlock the Extreme Modes for the Final Steps of Faith and Thoradin's Reign, speak to the Wandering Minstrel. Each of the seven Extreme Primals can drop a Lanar Whistle. If you collect all seven of these flying mounts, the NPC Walking Atlas in Idleshire will offer you the quest Fiery Wings, Fiery Hearts, which awards the very large and very bright Firebird Mount. Let's move on to the major narrative quest lines presented in Heavensward. Patch 3.15 introduced the first chapter in the St. Endelum Scholasticate story. In order to access this level 60 quest, you must first complete the level 56 quest, Keeping the Ledger, which is available from the NPC Mathay, located in the Pillars near the Jeweled Croisaire. If you've already done that, he will then offer you the quest Contradicting Convictions. The 3.4 and 3.5 chapters of this quest series begin with the NPC Briarden, who can be found near St. Ramon's Cathedral. For finishing the third chapter of this side story, you are awarded two cosmetic items, the Inspector's Eyeglasses and the Scholasticate Coat. Additionally, you will learn the Spectacles emote. From start to finish, this quest series is between 3 and 5 hours long. Patch 3.2 introduced the first chapter of the Further Hildebrand Adventures. This chapter begins in the Jeweled Croisaire with the quest A Gentleman Falls Rather Than Flies. Chapters 2, 3, and 4 will begin near the Foundation Aetherite with the quests The GG Situation, A Gazebo to Call Our Own, and The Proud and the Pointy-Eyed. Unlike at the level 50 Hildebrand quests, the Heavensward series don't feature any trials, but are filled to the brim with humorous cutscenes all the same. Each chapter takes between 1 and 2 hours to experience. When you finish the 4th chapter, you will be awarded with the GG Minion to add to your collection. After completing the main scenario quest, Litany of Peace, you can pick up The Paths We Walk from the Four Temps Manservant inside the Four Temps Manor. This is a main scenario recap. It revisits locations and NPCs you've encountered during the Heaven's Ward 50 through 60 main scenario, and you'll be able to see how things are going now that the Dragonsong War has concluded. There is a lot of traveling involved. Expect to spend an hour or two on this one. At the end of your tour, you will be awarded with a new emote that honors a fallen friend. I'd like to make special note of a minor quest series available at level 54 in Mordona that you may have missed. The NPC Resh Palai may have a quest, Toll Booty. This quest series introduces you to the Domen Adventurers Guild. This group of children ties back to some of the level 50 main scenario quests involving Yugiri. I expected this plotline to get additional development at level 60, but it did not. There was no unique reward tied to these quests, just leveling experience points, but I have a feeling that these NPCs may appear again during Stormblood. The final group of side story quests in Heaven's Ward are the Beast Tribes. In order to progress these stories, you will need to build your reputation with the associated tribe by doing daily quests. 
The Vanu Vanu tribe initially unlocks by speaking to Sanu Vanu at OK Zundu in the Sea of Clouds and accepting the quest Three Beaks to the Wind. They will teach you the Sun Drop Dance emote during the course of this quest series. For the Vath Beast Tribe, you will want to look for the quest Naming of Vath in the Dravinian Forelands offered by the Vath Storyteller. The Vath unfortunately do not have a dance to teach you, but each of the Beast Tribes does have a flying mount and a minion that they will sell you once you've reached high enough reputation. There is also a special set of glamour gear available from the Vath and Vanu Vanu that is, well, unique. The final tribe is the Mughals. The quest that unlocks them comes from the Seething Stonemason, located at Mogholm in the Churning Mists. If you are unable to locate the quest, Tricks and Stones, you may have some additional work to do. In addition to the main scenario progress that would unlock normal beast tribes, the Mughal crafting dailies require completion of a very long series of optional zone quests, starting with A Pebble for Your Thoughts, offered by Mogleo. There are 18 quests in this series, so you may have to look it up if you are unable to pick up Tricks and Stones from the Seething Stonemason. Moogle Beast Tribe quests are for crafters and require a level 50 crafting profession. You will learn the Moogle Dance by completing the Moogle side story. Truth be told, if you are starting any or all of these Beast Tribes today, you will not have enough time to max out your reputation before Stormblood releases. It takes approximately 30 days to cap reputation. You can work on them all simultaneously. Each tribe offers three quests per day whose reputation and experience reward increases depending on your current reputation level. If you have the opportunity to finish all three Beast Tribe main stories, you will unlock Heaven's Ward's combined Beast Tribe quest series. This is connected back to the events of the level 50 combined Beast Tribe quest, but does not require that you have completed it. If you meet the requirements, the Goblin Drydox in Idleshire will have the quest When Good Dragons Go Bad. This is similar in structure to the Paths We Walk quest, but not as lengthy. You will learn the Moonlift Dance emote from completing this quest. Speaking of things you don't really have enough time to finish before Stormblood releases, the Anima Weapons series initially starts in Idleshire when you reach level 60. Rowena will offer you the quest An Unexpected Proposal and put you in touch with Ardisher. All of the remaining Anima Weapon quests will come from Ardisher, who has set up a lab near the Aetherite in Azizla. This is a very time-consuming process designed to be completed over the course of the entire expansion. Many of the steps have had their inputs halved or even quartered, but three weeks start to finish is unlikely if you plan on sleeping at all between now and Stormbrod's release. If you do manage to finish this questline, in addition to your shiny Anima Weapon Lux, you will also get an Anima Minion for your collection. That should give you plenty to do over the next three weeks, but if none of that sounds appealing, the Make It Rain campaign seasonal event started at the Gold Saucer on Monday. Stop by Ulda to pick up the connecting quest, and then you can grind MGP so you can purchase that new flying chair mount that was introduced in patch 3.5. Did I miss anything important? I'm sure I missed something, but I hope it wasn't anything important. Anyway, thank you for tuning in today. I'll be back next week for another Countdown to Stormblood video. We will be focusing on recommendation for players who want to start a Red Mage or Samurai on day one. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos are posted, and you can follow me on Twitter at ItsBoats. Have a great day!